we're going to start our project by building the basic UI structure for our app, which will be two labels telling the user what to do, and then three images showing three world flags. First things first, you wanna get the assets for this project, which are all on GitHub at this URL here, github.com slash two straws slash hacking with Swift. When you're there, press this green code button, then choose download zip. And that'll download a zip file of all the assets for this project and indeed all the other projects in both the Swift UI and the older UI kit edition of this series, all in one. When you have that, you're gonna get this folder of images here called Hacking with Swift Main. Inside there is Swift UI, and inside there is Project 2 files, the files for this project. Of course, there's also Project 4 files, Project 5 files, 8 files, 11 files, so forth, future files for future projects. But right now, you want Project 2 files. Now, all these things here are the pictures for this project. You can see there's a whole bunch of country names here like Estonia or France or Germany or Ireland and Italy and so forth. And each one is named very precisely. The country name first, Estonia, France, Germany, then either at 2x or at 3x. This is to handle double resolution and triple resolution iOS devices, like modern iPhones, depending on which kind of device you have. What you want to do is select your asset catalog, that's the assets file over here. And then in Finder, just select all these files and drag them on in to this bar on the left below Acts in Color and App Icon. And now release. And it'll all be copied to the project and sorted neatly. You'll see their names are now just simply Estonia, France, Germany, and so forth. Because Xcode knows the Estonia picture, 2X and 3X, are the same picture, just different resolutions. 1X, of course, is empty across the board. 1X is the original iPhone, and iPhone up to iPhone 3GS or so. Uh, since iPhone 4, all iPhones have been Retina, which is 2X or greater. The latest ones are, of course, 3X. Anyway, that's our image imported. Our next step is to add some properties and content view to store our game data. One will be an array of our flag names, and one will be an integer storing which country has the correct flag for this particular round of the game. So we'll say var countries is an array of Estonia, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, oops, capital I in Italy, uh, Nigeria, then Poland, then Spain, then UK, Ukraine, and US, like that. So these names exactly match the picture names we just added to our asset catalog, Germany, Ireland, Italy, and so forth. The same country names appear here. And that integer for determining whether we are correct or not. So we'll say var correct answer is int.random in zero through two. Now this call here means give me a random number in the range zero, one, or two, which is perfect here. Three flags is the first, second, or third, zero, one, or two. Inside our view body, let's get rid, get rid of this padding and then everything but the V stack. Inside here, we'll start by telling the player what to do. So we'll write text, tap the flag of, then text country's correct answer. Below here, we want to have our tappable flag buttons. And while we could just put them directly into this V stack, we're not going to. We're actually gonna make a second VStack here so we have more control over spacing. Now, this VStack we made already has no explicit spacing. It's just default spacing right now. But the flags we'll be adding, I want to have 30 points of spacing between them so it looks better on the screen. So, we're gonna wrap this previous VStack with a new VStack here. Spacing of 30, like this. And then, after the inner VStack, we're gonna say there's a for each, zero up to three, number coming in, and this is where we're gonna place our button for this flag. So we'll say button, flag was tapped, with the label being the image of country's number. Boom. 
There we go. So having two vertical stacks like this allows us to control things more precisely. This outer one has 30 points in spacing between every view inside it, whereas the inner one has no custom spacing. It's just system default spacing. That's enough for now to give you a basic idea of how our UI is going to look. And already you can see it doesn't look very good, right? Some flags have whitened them, like here and here. It just blends into the background and uh, the flags are kind of centered vertically on the screen. Doesn't look great either. We are going to polish the UI. Um, it looked better over time, but for now, let's just add a background color to the whole thing so it's clearer on the screen where the flags are. This means putting something behind this V stack, and that's where a Z stack comes in. So we can layer things one above the other. This means we'll have a V stack inside a V stack inside a Z stack, and that's perfectly normal. Stacks inside stacks inside stacks is how Swift UI works. So First things first, we'll wrap this whole thing in a Z, Z stack like this. Place it before, then place a closing brace afterwards to indent the whole thing. And now, the very top of the Z stack, before everything else, we'll say color dot blue, fill the whole thing in blue, and then we'll do ignores safe area. So that thing goes edge to edge, regardless of where the rest of the layout is. And now I've got a nice dark background color behind stuff. We can modify this text here so it stands out more clearly. We're going to say, tap the flag of has a foreground style of white, as does the correct answer text like that. This design is not going to set the world alight, but honestly, it's a great start.